God loves you deeply and intimately, and he will do the miraculous on your behalf. I'm Angela Madden, and I'm here with Matt Cogley, and we have a wonderful program yes. today. Yeah, oh, it's gonna be so good. Speaking of miraculous, coming up on today's program, we're gonna be joined with Pastor Glenn Germany from Jesus' Dwelling Place, a church in North Braddock, PA. He's going to be sharing how God saved him from a horrific encounter with a gunman at his church this past Sunday. The details of what took place are truly astounding, so you definitely don't want to miss our conversation with Pastor Glenn coming up later in the program. Also, in just a moment, we will be joined by Dr. Laurel Shaler, who has teamed up with the world-renowned Dr. Gary Chapman, author of the Five Love Languages book, to co-author a new book. Dr. Laurel will join us to share some of her adoption story and tell us about her mission to help parents love adopted children well. Yep. Plus, we're going to announce the winner of yesterday's Stump the Viewer question. Stay tuned to find out if you are the winner of an incredible prize package. Angela, this show... She's, it's, it's kind of giving me some goosebumps. Yes. We're going to be talking about some really, really good stuff here. Yes. I love knowing and hearing those stories mm. of God's divine intervention yeah. that you know only God could have done it. Yeah. And getting to talk about adopted children yes. and how we love them. I mean, I really do believe that this is a part of our community, our churches mm. that needs more help. And Dr. Laurel is doing just that. So you may not, or you may, win Stump the Viewer today, but you can certainly know you're winning as an adopted son or daughter of God. But how about those who are physically or biologically adopted by parents? Our first guest today, Dr. Laurel Shaler, is a mental health professional, university professor, and mother of three beautiful adopted children. Dr. Laurel joins us now to share insight from her new book, Loving Adopted Children Well, a five love language approach. Welcome to Hope Today, Dr. Laurel. Hi, thank you so much for having me. We are so glad to have you. And without delay, I wanna hop straight into this. What brought about you and Dr. Gary Chapman teaming up to co-author a book on loving adopted children well? I know it's it's been so incredible. If you had told me a few years ago that I would have this opportunity, I just would not have believed you. It, it's been really amazing. And so the story goes that my husband and I, we adopted, we actually adopted two children by traditional adoption. Uh, and then we have a little baby by embryo adoption. But after we adopted our first two children and I was just, just gobbling up all kinds of parenting resources as I was striving to learn how to be the best mom that I could be. And one of the resources was the five love languages for children written by Dr. Gary Chapman and co-author Ross Campbell. And as I was reading through the book, I found it so helpful. And I also was thinking, oh, maybe, maybe it would um, be meaningful to have a story here from an adoptive family's perspective, or maybe a couple of examples here could be helpful. And I started thinking about some of the other uh, areas surrounding adoption where maybe uh, having this information would be useful for those that have been on my similar journey or who were on that journey. And so one day I was at a conference. I had written a book with Moody Publishers called Relational Reset, Unlearning the Habits That Hold You Back. And I was at the Moody table and I was talking with Dr. Chapman's acquisitions editor, John Hinckley. And we got to talking about this idea. And thankfully he thought, oh, we might have something here. And so he approached Dr. Chapman and we had the opportunity to talk about this possible book and what, what would kind of make it unique and different from the other books and how it could really uh, be a powerful resource for those families that have been through an adoption. And so, as they say, the rest is history. We wrote the book and now we're delighted to be sharing about it. I love that you did because I have some dear friends now who are going through the foster um, and adoption process and I know it can be very complicated. Would you share with us a little bit of your own journey to motherhood? Yes, definitely. It's always a joy for me to do that. Um, my husband and I actually will celebrate 21 years of marriage this year, and our youngest is four months old. So <laughs> that's a, if you do the math, you know, that, that's a, we've been on a long journey. Um, but our first um, baby came to us through a traditional adoption. She was actually in a kinship care placement. So you're talking about your friends in foster care. She was with our state 
uh, Department of Social Services, but she was with a, a relative of hers. And just through the Lord's providence, my childhood Sunday school teacher uh, knew that family and knew us and asked if she could connect us. And I have to tell you that when she first mentioned it to me, I, I didn't think it would go anywhere. We'd been down that road. We'd been trying to adopt for years and we just nothing had panned out. Just nothing worked out. It just wasn't God's timing yet. Um, but lo and behold, this situation did work out. And so a couple of days later, I talked with the bio relative who was a saint. She's passed on to heaven now. Um, and then two days later, we met this baby. And the moment that door was opened, I, I, I knew that I was looking at my child. And it was a really beautiful moment. Um, all, all parenting moments are not hard, regardless of how your children come to you. Can I get an amen? amen. Parenting yeah. can be tough, <laughs> but, um, but that was a beautiful moment. So we were able to help care for her and obtain custody of her. And then we were able to adopt her shortly before her first birthday. And as long as that adoption process took from start to finish about five years from when we started our journey to the time that we adopted her, our next adoption was just as quick. Uh, we got a phone call that um, a young lady was um, wanting to place her child for adoption, and that baby was born a month later. Mm -hmm. And we uh, were in the hospital uh, at three days old and uh, moved forward with an adoption of, of our son. And so those were our first two adoptions, and we thought we were done. And a girlfriend of mine asked me, are y'all going to adopt again? And I said, no, our hands are so full. <laughs> We've, we've got our son, we've got our daughter, we are, we're blessed and happy. And the Lord said, well, wait a minute, <laughs> you, you have space for one more in your home. Wow. And uh, he shocked us by calling us to embryo adoption. When I tell you it was not even on my radar, I'm 100% serious. It was totally 100% from the Lord. I didn't even think it was a possibility for me, given my own health history and background and um, when I began to explore it, like the Lord just put all the puzzle pieces together in a way that only he could have. And everything was so smooth and healthy. And uh, now we have this, this perfect little four month old baby. That is such a beautiful story. And I love how each one has its own intricacies. You mentioned embryo adoption and I'm not quite as familiar with it. And I'm sure our viewers, viewers aren't. Would you mind explaining exactly what that is? Yes, absolutely, because you're right. It's not as common, and not everyone knows exactly what it is. But an embryo adoption comes about when a couple has in vitro fertilization. They go through in vitro fertilization, and they have one or more remaining embryos. And so just to be clear, the embryo is, is already alive. It is an egg and a sperm that's already been joined, and it's alive, and it is frozen. And if they're not donated to somebody who can have that embryo transferred into their own womb, then they're destroyed or they're frozen forever. So when a couple cannot um, use that, those embryos, maybe use isn't the correct term, but when they're not able to have any more children for whatever reason, they can make a choice, a sacrificial loving choice to place that embryo for adoption. And so we received this baby embryo and I had this embryo transferred into my womb. And so I became the child's birth mother, wow. even though I'm not the child's biological mother. So I'm an adoptive mother and a birth mother, but not a biological mother. It's, <laughs> it's super complicated. <laughs> Dr. Laura, I love how you just said that a little bit earlier. Like it wasn't on your radar, this was all taking place, but it was definitely on God's radar, right? And he knew exactly the right home and the right parents for these children, which is amazing. So let's talk real quick about the five love languages. I only know it as it concerns to, you know, maybe a spouse or some, uh, to regards to that relationship. Let's talk about five love languages. Why is it so important for adopted children, you know, in your personal experience? Yeah, and so the five love languages was originated by Dr. Chapman after decades of working with couples as a pastor. And his first book uh, on the five love languages was released in 1992, and it has sold millions of copies around the world and been translated into something like 40 languages. And um, some years later, he, he started to realize that, hey, you know what? This doesn't just apply to romantic relationships. This applies to every relationship. Mm, yeah. And so the five love languages, and for those that aren't familiar, are physical touch, words of affirmation, gifts, acts of service, and quality time. And he discovered that every, every um, 
instance of demonstrating love falls under one of those five categories. And so he teaches, and so I, of course, agree and follow along with this, that every child needs to receive love in all five of these ways. But in time, your children will begin to demonstrate to you that they prefer love in one or maybe two ways. And so you want to really fill up their love tank with an emphasis on that particular love language. So they're important. All five are important. But you want to start to observe what does, what does your child prefer. And so, again, all children need love in all of these ways. But specific to children who have been adopted, we started to explore maybe some intricacies or some nuances that needed to be sorted through. So, for example, with physical touch, if you have a child, Angela mentioned a good friend of hers who had children come in through the foster care system. If you have a child that may have been neglected or may have been abused, we're going to approach physical touch in a different way. We're not going to ignore it because we know all the research shows the benefits of physical touch. But we're also not going to force these children to be hugged and kissed and wrapped up in our arms if that's not what they want. We're going to maybe take it slow. Maybe, as, as one uh, adoptive mama told me, her children would let her rub their feet. They didn't want hugs and kisses, but they, but they, they loved their foot rubs. Or maybe we're going to put on shoes as an act of service, but as we're doing that, we're, we're we're touching them. Maybe we're going to swing them in the swing. And again, we're touching them. Maybe we're helping them wash their hands. Mm -hmm. And in that process, we're giving them physical touch. So we're going to be more conscientious about how we demonstrate that love language based on their own circumstances. I love how you talked in your book about loss, that adoptive children, no matter what stage you bring them into your life and into your home, there is a sense of loss. And so approaching it with the five love languages, you're kind of um, catering to that space of loss, filling in that gap and giving them more of what they need. If you were to speak to a prospective adoptive parent, what is a key piece of advice you would give them based on that understanding? Well, the very first piece of advice I always give is to pray, to make sure that, that you are truly called to this adoption journey because it is not easy. It takes a lot of patience. The, I, I didn't used to be a very patient person, but the Lord has used this to help increase my patience. <laughs> um, and I'm grateful for that. But we want to pray. We want to make sure that if you are married, that you're on the same page as your spouse and that the two of you are united. Uh, I, I've wanted to adopt since I was a teenager. But my husband wasn't necessarily on that same page. And it took many years. We had been married nine years. And he came to me one day and said, I want to adopt. And I was like, here's the paperwork. I've got it ready. <laughs> right? Like, I, I am so ready. But I never pressured him or badgered him. I mean, I, I do with other things. But not with this. Because this was so important. And I knew that we had to both be called. It had to be a heartfelt calling. We have a, a training program in our state for foster parents. And it's called Heartfelt Calling. And I love that. Because that's what it has to be. So pray. Make sure you're on the same page with your spouse. And do your homework. Um, not only investigate all of the agencies or attorneys you might be working with, because let's be honest, not all are as honest or upfront as they should be. But also do, do studying, uh, get training in trust-based relational intervention so that you can know how to create a safe and loving and nurturing environment for those kiddos. Because yes, every single adoption starts off with loss. And even when you bring children into your home as infants, they have still experienced a trauma. And sometimes they've also experienced pre-birth trauma based on whatever their bio mom was going through or consuming while they were pregnant. So we want to be aware of that, that I always say adoption is a place where joy and sorrow meet. And so we don't want to neglect either side. Dr. Laurel, you have so much beautiful insight. And like I was telling you, I'm getting this book for my friends and, and their family who are going through this process. We just so appreciate your voice and your book. Again, that book is The Loving Adopted Children Well, A Five Love Languages Approach. We appreciate all that you're doing. And thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. God bless. God bless you. Don't go anywhere because when we return, we'll be joined by Pastor Glenn Germany as he shares how God saved his life and the powerful message he has about forgiveness. Plus, find out if you won this week's Stump the Viewer. We'll be right back. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God. But they were just like you and me. 
They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Hey, thanks so much for joining back and staying in tune with us. In case you missed yesterday's program, first of all, shame on you. <laughs> and second of all, we had a stump the viewer question just for you, the audience. Here's what yesterday's question was. How many total lepers did Jesus heal as recorded in all of the Bible? Was it A9, B10, C11, or D12? Angela. Do you think you know the answer? I think I do, but I think it's a little bit of a trick question. It kind of is. <laughs> what do you think it is? What's, what's the answer? I think it's C, 11. C, it was. C, 11. <laughs> okay, the Bible gives accounts of Jesus healing 11 lepers. He healed one man who sought him out in Matthew 8, 2, Mark 1, 40, Luke 5, 12, and 10 at one time in Luke 17, 17. Incredible. He may have healed more lepers than this, but they were not recorded. So, okay, let's find out who the winner is. Can I get a drum roll? Okay, congratulations, Kayla Lo. You are the winner of the Stump the Viewer. You'll receive this book chosen by God in this T-shirt. Way to go, Kayla, and thank you to everyone who played along at home. I love that. Yeah. And I do think it was a trick question. So if you're out there and you missed it and you said 10, that's okay. You get credit with Jesus. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, listen, I'm so excited to be joined with our guest this past Sunday during his church service at Jesus' Dwelling Place Church in North Braddock, PA. A man walked up and approached Pastor Glenn holding a gun. The man then proceeded to pull the trigger. But what happened next was only an act of God. Pastor Glenn, it's so great to have you here today with us on Hope Today. Thank you, Matt. And thank yeah. you, Angela, for having yes, me. I yeah. really appreciate it. Absolutely. You know, thank God you're able to be here with oh, us in you, person, Jesus. you know, and, yes. Yes. and I know every one of us have some type of scary interaction and encounter, but God, right? Yes. But, Absolutely. but only very few can say, this. wow, but I'm preaching the word. I'm doing the will of God. Absolutely. And a gun is pointing at me attempted to go off, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. I mean, please share with us I mean, just that whole moment the best you can. What was yeah. going on in your mind? I mean, to be honest with you, and I explain to everybody, like, it happened so fast. Yes. Ain't had no time for anything to be going on in my mind. You know, yes. it was almost yeah. just natural reactions, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I just give all glory to God. Yes. And it's it, it just amazing, you know, it just happened. It's one second um, up there, opening my sermon about to speak and the next thing I know there's a gun coming right at me and I'm like wow I mean I I, I can't even say I said wow immediately you know I know you see a gun you duck you run yeah. and by the time I can react I'm seeing uh, my deacon Superman running after him and yeah, yeah. you know tackling him and at that point all I can think of go help him you know and I, I just thank God that I'm here today. That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah, you, you know, it just kind of blows me away about the whole situation is, you know, we, we know in ministry we're going to mm -hmm. face persecution, mm -hmm. but persecution to that extent, you know, mm -hmm. and one thing I, that I've heard about just this whole situation is thank you so much for even still being a man of God mm -hmm. when maybe some people might have reacted and, and retaliated out of the flesh, mm -hmm. you know, but... Correct. What, what was your next reaction? Okay, after the situation sem semi-calmed down and under control, what did you do next? Um, uh, I thank God because a lot of times, you know, like you say, we always teaching as pastors and preaching and, you know, but when it, you're really under fire, you know, how are you going to respond? Yeah. But God has been preparing 
us, my church, for this moment. And we didn't know we were being prepared for the moment, mm. but we've been learning the book of Peter for yeah. the last two months. Okay. And so, you know, Peter teach about being in fiery trials that's gonna <laughs> test your faith and it's gonna see what you made of, wow. you know, and it's gonna show you yourself. Yeah. And then we've been learning to count it all joy in the midst of it because yes. we understand through the book of James, that's how we grow. Mm -hmm. And so when it happened, the word of God was already in me. And yeah. so therefore, what's in you is what comes out of you. Yeah. So I was squeezed and I was tested Ooh. and tried by fire and yeah. just the love of God came out of me. Man. I've been loved by God so long in my life. God then forgave me of so many different things. Yeah. And he has really, you know, just he healed me. And at wow. that point, all I can do is return what God has done for me. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Now, Pastor Glenn, did you know this man who ca came into your church? Had you ever seen him before? Never knowing, never seeing nothing. I mean, it was, and we do a lot of work in the community. You know, we're a small church, but we do as much as we can with the resources that we have. But at the same token, I never seen, never heard of him, nothing, yeah. uh, you know. Which I know they're showing a clip of it right now. I mean, I can't, I, first of all, I love how you're just talking about you're, you guys were preaching on Peter, mm -hmm. you know, and it's kind of one of those moments that we ask God to give us revelation. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> but never do we, can we ever imagine that this is the type of revelation that, that's happening right now. I mean, what's even just, so it's so recent, it's still fresh from this past Sunday, nice. but even for, for, you know, your congregation, mm -hmm. how has this, has this um, revealed anything or, or from a congregational standpoint, what's that looking like right now? It was Yesterday was our first time back as a group in church on Thursday for our Bible study. Okay. It was amazing. We yeah. opened up in praise and yeah. worship. Yeah. I mean, it was just so much healing. And just, mm -hmm. you know, it's amazing how everybody understood what was going on. It's a mm -hmm. spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. warfare, and we actually, you know, understood it as such, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And the blessing is that we believe that God brought him there yeah. to us because wow. he knew that that's the place that that child can actually get help because the simple fact if he would have did what he done prior and then went into a supermarket it's a chance that you know they oh, would have yes. shot him or whatever yeah, but yeah. at there god knew we were ready mm -hmm. and when you know everything settled down he has now a chance to get help wow. and so that's the biggest thing and no yeah. sin is beyond god's redemption Come right. on. and so therefore at that point you know, it was a blessing that he came to where he came to, a safe haven. Wow. <laughs> that truly is beautiful, your perspective, that this was the way that God could draw him mm -hmm. into his house mm -hmm. to get him the healing he needs. Mm -hmm. Now, I know from the stories that we've heard that you have actually, in fact, already forgiven him. Is oh, that correct? Yeah. The minute that he done it, 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 it was just amazing. And it, it surprised me too, be honest with you, because at one second, I'm protecting the congregation from him. At the next second, I'm protecting him from the congregation. Yeah. And just sitting there and seeing him, you know, you just had mercy on him, you know? You understand that, you know, whatever it is that he's going through, he needs Jesus. And I can't sit up here and preach about Jesus wow. and then see somebody who needs Ooh, Jesus and then be angry with him, right you know? Yeah. So therefore, it was just amazing to me you know, seeing it within myself, the love that actually poured out of yeah. me at that moment, just yeah. letting him know, look, you know, I asked him why he did it and he explained to me, I don't know why I did it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I forgive you. I yeah. forgive you. I love you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I want you to understand I'm not upset with you. Sure. And, and it was just ministering to him. And we got other footage where you'll see just me and him you know, me holding him yeah. and not even holding him. It's like just holding him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you, yeah. I mean, like, just like almost just praying over him and mm -hmm. my church members are praying, you know, and it was just amazing, you know, to see somebody at one point, he's trying to kill you at the next second, you know, you're praying for him. Yeah. Let's stay on that for a minute because that, that's a word in itself. And mm -hmm. we could prepare all in the natural for things like this to happen, you know, but let's talk about just the spiritual. I mean, how do we as Christians and as the church why do we need to take that into consideration even more spiritually? Because the way you're looking at it blows me away. Yeah. Yes, you need to protect your own life for safety, but for the sake of this man's eternity, right? So how should the church start looking at that, preparing themselves for an encounter that could, could happen? Like you say, it's really no preparation for it. It's just really the more you're in the word of God, yeah. the more you're, you know, following the things of God. That's what the preparation is. Wow. You know, the word of God is so important. Yes. And it's just a lot of times like 
People are wondering what you're going to preach tomorrow, current events or the event that just happened. No, I'm going to teach the word of God yes. because the word of God can prep you for any current event. Yes. So the truth of the matter is you have to have the word of God in you. And if you have the word of God in you, it's going to prepare you for everything. Powerful. Yeah. Well, in our last few moments here, mm -hmm. would you mind looking into that camera there, Pastor, mm -hmm. and just praying for the one who is holding on to unforgiveness mm -hmm. and leading them into that journey you just walked through? Amen. Yes, it's just amazing because, and I'll go right into prayer and I apologize, but That's you know, nice. yesterday we were just speaking one with another and was speaking about how they didn't lose two family members that day. They actually lost one but they gain one. Wow. He has a chance to actually be redeemed. Amen. Come on. And so it is something to see, you know, we're all about lost souls. Mm -hmm. So this is our opportunity wow. to, like you say, let go of unforgiveness, yeah. amen? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and really start forgiving people because it's all about souls. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Dear Lord God, we love you, praise you, yes. we glorify you, we exalt you, we bless your holy name. For you are Lord, you are God, there is no one like you. you. We just pray, you, Father God, Lord Jesus, you will open understanding you will allow people to see you in this here miracle. Dear Heavenly Father God, Lord Jesus, let us let go of unforgiveness, Heavenly Father God. Let people, Heavenly Father God, Lord Jesus, learn to forgive one another, Heavenly Father God. It's all about entering into your kingdom. Yes. So we pray, Heavenly Father God, Lord Jesus, for those who are holding on to unforgiveness. We pray, Heavenly Father God, that they will let it go. We're praying for a revelation from you, the importance of letting go. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. We glorify you and we praise you. I believe, Heavenly Father God, you have heard and I thank you for moving out. So I rejoice in the name of Jesus, I give thanks. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Well, Pastor Glenn, we thank you so much for yes. being here. What a powerful testimony. And there is no question in our minds or the world's <laughs> mind, because this made national news, yes. that amen. God is with you amen. and he has divine purpose for you amen. and Jesus Dwelling Place Church here in Braddock. We thank you for your testimony and how you are a living epistle. Thank you. I appreciate it, Angela. Thank, thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you, Matt. Thank it's you. really been my blessing. Amen. Thank you. Just as Pastor Glenn Germany shared with us, forgive, walk into the full measure that Christ has given you and allow others to experience it. I've heard it said before that you must forgive and continually forgive until all is forgiven. Today, Christ has done much for you. So let's release it into the world around us that they may experience the hope and the joy you have within. God bless you.